Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. This video is going to be episode one of the Ratchet Engine Build Series. Now I'm going to get this engine going in two phases. Because this whole vehicle is brand new, chassis, everything, ground up, it's brand new. So I don't want to spend all sorts of time and money getting the engine um, running with a turbo and high horsepower and all that. I don't want to put the time into that yet. So phase one I just want to get the engine running. I mean, I want to make it nice, build my own exhaust and, and things like that, and have it run really good and put it on the dyno, get it running really good. In its stock form here, it should be about 240 horsepower. I think if I play with it and put some camshafts in there, I could probably get 300 maybe naturally aspirated. Probably not at this elevation. I'm at 6,200 feet, but either way, I might experiment with it and get more acclimated to the tuning and uh, you know sink my teeth into it but then once the vehicle is more vetted and I'm I'm happy with the vehicle then I want to switch to phase two on the engine phase two on the engine I want to put a turbo on it and an intercooler and actually get some pretty respectable horsepower hopefully up around 400 horsepower I'm really not sure I'll be honest with you Working on engines like that, I've never done before. I've worked on a lot of engines, but just rebuilds and stock engines, or back in the day, it was carbureted. I don't really have much experience with fuel injection, especially standalone fuel injections, which this one is going to have. And I'm really looking forward to that, learning it and all that stuff. But as it is right now, I don't have a lot of experience with that. So I don't want to get the engine initially running and have to mess with all sorts of complexities on that. So phase one is just to get the engine running in a more simple fashion and then move on forward with the chassis or finish the chassis up and then when I'm good with that I'll come back and do a phase two on the engine. So for starters what I'm working with here is this is a Honda J35 honestly it could be a J32, J35, whatever just think of it as I'll be running a J-series the J-series in the junkyards by me are plentiful so this is a motor that I'll have a lot of access to if I feel I need a different J35 or a J32 or I need parts or whatever. I think I've broke it down into a couple of steps and although there will be a couple of videos, this is probably going to be a fairly extensive video series, but there'll probably be more than one video for uh, a couple of these items. But the first thing I have is the cooling system. I need to figure that out. I've got the electronic fuel injection, I need to figure that out. The wiring, you could say that's part of the fuel injection, but there's a lot of wiring to it, so I'm considering them kind of separate things. I've got the exhaust, the fuel system, the intake manifold, and the engine adapter or the clutch. Now the engine adapter or the clutch, I already have a Kennedy Engineering engine adapter ordered. So as soon as that gets here, this is just a, a piece of wood in here right now. When the adapter gets here, I'll do a video just showing how I mate that up and hopefully I'll get the clutch at the same time so we can do all that at the same time. And then after I get the engine bolted to the engine adapter, then I'll actually make motor mounts. If you notice right now, I don't have any motor mounts in the engine. It's actually being supported by that little block of wood right there. Although this, uh, this adapter actually holds it all the way up, but that just gives it a little bit of a little bit of extra safety. But once I have it on the engine adapter, I think it's going to move back about a quarter of an inch. So once I have that, then I'll fab up some motor mounts here to, to lock the engine in. Then I've got the intake manifold. This is going to be an interesting one. You may or may not be aware that the J series has this really big intake manifold that I don't like. I'm not going to run that. So I'm in the middle of working on an intake manifold right now. None of this is welded. This is all just taped together as I'm figuring out what I'm going to be doing, but I'm just making an intake manifold. I'll have the throttle body on this end. It'll be sticking towards the opening in the shock towers there. And you can see the little piece I'm working on down there. I'll have a video showing as I'm working on this. And then as we come over here, I was originally making that intake manifold for this. This is the throttle body that came with that engine, and it is cable driven. This is the way I was going to go at first, but now, now that I'm starting to look at my fuel injection system, I also have two GM drive-by wire throttle bodies. This is from an Ecotech. This is actually the same throttle body that's actually on the Ecotech in Mahler right now. It's a spare for that. This is actually the same diameter 
as the throttle body that came off of the J35, or it's it's like within one millimeter. And this is a uh, a larger throttle body that came off of a uh, a GM V6, and this is also drive-by wire. And this throttle body is significantly larger than the stock one. I haven't decided which one I'm going to go with yet. Um, this one is the eight wire. This one is the six wire. So I'll have to look up the differences between those and figure out what I'm going to do. But regardless, whichever way I go, I need to modify this uh, plate here before I do the the intake manifold. So I got to figure that out. But that'll be that'll be a separate video. And then for the electronic fuel injection. I have got uh, AEM Infinity. I've got the Infinity 506, and I've got the digital display for it. And I've actually been working on where I'm going to install those. As it is right now, I've made uh, this this plate. I've got one here, one on the other side. This is pretty much going to be it for interior back here. I'm not going to have anything back here, but either way, the Infinity ECU is going to bolt right here and then this I've got a little fuse block and then I'll have some relays down here and then I'll have all the wiring harness tied down there but I'm just just starting to lay some of that out and figure out what I'm gonna do so I'll have a another video where I go over that then I've got the fuel system and I've already started working on the fuel system and I've I've got segments of a video so I'll have this stuff in a separate video but I've I've plumbed into the fuel rail here and then I've got a plumbing line coming over here and then I've got a, uh, a fuel pressure regulator right here. Then I'm going to have my supply line here, the return line down here. And I believe that in this cavity, I'm going to have a, a piece that sets down in there and it'll have the pre-filter, the fuel pump, and then a post filter. So it'll take from the tank, go through the filters and the pump, and then make its way to the regulator. And then at that point, it'll go into the fuel rail. But I'm, I haven't ordered all of those parts, so that will be a separate video as well. The exhaust for phase one, my initial build here, is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to bolt the stock intake manifolds on here, and then I'll have an adapter coming off of the intake manifold that's going to connect to these pipes. And I'm just going to, these are just pipes that I'm going to cut up and use for the bends and the straights and all that. Now I'm going to come out of that manifold, head this way come out of here, turn around, and then I'll have this muffler sitting somewhere around here. So this will also be very similar to Mahler. With Mahler, I was able to actually purchase a header for an Ecotec, and then down here, I just connected my pipe up to it, did a hard turn, and then another hard turn coming this way, and then I had the glass pack right there. It's actually the same glass pack that I'm putting on Ratchet. But the difference being Ratchet's engine cage is integral to the chassis, so it's got a lot more supports in here where Mahler doesn't. So I can't just buy a universal header and put it on there. But either way, I'm not going to get that involved on this exhaust because on phase two, I'm going to switch this over to turbo. And when I do that, then I'm going to put the time and effort into making a nice, real nice header exhaust system that has a crossover and comes and somewhere I'll have a turbo and all that. So for just phase one, I really just want to do something that will get this up and going for now. Now the biggest unknown, the biggest part I can't figure out yet, and I want your guys' input on this, is what to do with the radiator. This is, this represents the radiator that I'm looking at. This is the size of the radiator that I'm looking at. It's actually a radiator meant for a Jeep Cherokee with the four liter um, straight six. That radiator is nice. I can get a nice aluminum one, and I like the size because it's real skinny and it's real long. You can put two electric fans on it, or there's room where you can do three, and I think I think that'll work really well. So this is just meant to mock the size of the radiator, and I'm thinking of maybe putting it somewhere around there. It obviously it'll be up a little bit and it might lean back and I have to have room between it and the seats for my seat belt harness so it'll be somewhere around here I I like that to an extent 
I don't like the fact that it's going to reject its heat all over everything back here. And I don't like the fact that I'll have a radiator right behind me. Um, so those are some of the negatives of that. The other option is to set it up something like this and, and it'll be in there kind of like this and that's kind of cool because I think I'll still have a little sliver where I'll be able to look out over the back and I mean I'm, I'd, I'd like to keep the back open but if I do end up putting the radiator here I think I'll still be able to see over it a little bit. Now of course this is nice because this is just going to eject all the heat right out of the body and I won't have any of those heat recirculation issues that sometimes I get with Mahler because with with the radiator here there will be a chance that some of this heat just kind of recirculates through here. So putting it back here you know all the heat gets blown right out none of the heat really affects any of this stuff like it won't be blowing on the shock absorbers or the bypass and and this area will be more open and I won't have a radiator directly behind me. So those are some of the pros. Um, some of the cons or the negatives are I'll lose all of my access through here because I'll have a, a radiator right here. I'll lose a lot of my visibility, obviously. Kind of creates a, a shadow back here because it essentially closes off the back window and I mean it won't be touching this stuff but it'll make access to the bypasses and all that a lot more difficult not impossible I think I'll still be able to get in there but it'll be way more difficult than if the radiator was here I mean when I put the radiator there you can see how it lets light in everything's brighter now you've got access to all of this stuff you get a lot of access but you know now we're back to some of the cons of having the radiator over here. So I literally, I have not decided. I keep going back and forth. I'll have this sitting here for a while just so I can kind of think about it and see it and, and see what I think. And then I've for the last week, I've had it back here showing me that what that would be like. And neither one of those, neither one of those are sinking in yet. So I can't, I can't decide on that. So if you guys want to chime in on that, no problem. Uh, one thing I can tell you is I'm not going to put I'm not going to put a radiator back here and although I want to have a wing I don't think I want to have the radiator built into the wing only reason is I think I want to be able to walk up and have have instant access to the motor if I put a wing back here I'm going to make the wing so that it hinges so that you just need to pull some pins and the wing will flip up out of the way I don't think I don't think that would be practical with the radiator so I mean, if you guys have some stellar ideas, let me know, but I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of having the, the radiator sit on top of the engine or behind it. And as I was building this project, I was trying to get creative and hide the radiator in here. Like I was gonna have kind of two radiators like you'll see on some uh, supercars. I was thinking of trying to squeeze a radiator back here, two smaller radiators. I was trying to think of all sorts of cool things that would make it so that you didn't really see the radiator up here. I thought that would have been really, really trick, but I, I just my brain hasn't been able to figure that out. So now I'm thinking that I'll have one either back here or behind the seat there. I guess another option is to have a radiator up front, but although there's a, there's a lot of advantages to that, especially. I do have a good amount of area right here and I will be making my own one piece front end so I could mold that in. But I, I also, just like I don't want it sitting on the engine, I don't want a radiator up front either. I don't want to have to run coolant lines up there. I don't want the the weight. I'm trying to keep the front end as light as possible. So I think my only options are here or up at the back window. So let me know what you think. All right guys, that's it for this video. Nothing major happening on this one. I was just giving you a high level. Hope you guys like it. Hope you're looking forward to it. I know I am, and I hope to see you on our next video. Take care.